Good morning. Woohoo! We are hot and live up here. Wow. Welcome, everyone in the room and online. We are delighted to be together. Woohoo! We are <laughs> ready to roll this morning. Uh, God's presence is here, and some of us are feeling it in our bodies. So it's uh, super exciting. But a um, little up down in our uh, morning welcome. Uh, woo! <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't think it's going to get better, folks. I'm so sorry. I'm going to invite you to stand because <laughs> someone should. No, let's stand. I, I, um, mm. ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you for grace to speak, Lord. <laughs> ah, Lord. We're delighted, Lord, to meet with you this morning, to pour out our love on you. Oh, this morning as I was preparing, I uh, just heard the heart of the Father. Um, he's hid things for us this morning. So as we come this morning to pour out our love on him, will you just lean your ear in to hear the secret that he wants to whisper to you? Thank you, Lord. Oh, we love you. We honor you. Glory to you, Lord. Ha. Oh, thank you. 
thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. We honor you. We honor you. We delight to pour out on you, Father. Ha ha. Oh, you're the best dad in the whole world. In the whole world, Lord, you're the best dad. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, we love you. We love you. We're honored oh, by your sacrifice for your love that was poured out, your blood poured out for us. Holy Spirit, thank you. We honor you ha, for your presence right here in our midst. Lead on. Lead on. We invite you to come. Come do what only you can do. Come do what only you can do. Ha ha. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. thank you for your presence already here Lord we thank you for the glory of God that just manifests in this room
It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises. We he hears faith this morning. Praise aloud, 
sing his praise aloud. Awake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud. Sing his praise aloud. Sing his praise. Oh, lift up your voices. him up right now.
we sing your praises, Lord. Father, we just stand in your presence today. Holy Spirit, you are swirling back and forth through this room. And you're declaring that you are doing a new thing today. Not something that we've experienced before. Not something common, but a new thing. So church, I just encourage you this morning to open your heart. Do not resist the Lord is speaking to you, what he's ministering to you right now, just open your arms and receive what he has. And for some of you, you will have never, ever experienced anything like this before. And so you're kind of questioning, is this God? Is this God? God has never encountered me in this way before. But I tell you this morning, God is doing a new thing wants a new place of intimacy. He wants a new place in your heart and in your life to do what he has designed to do. What he has designed to do both in you and through you. So open your heart this morning. Do not resist. 
Do not resist. Open your heart. away. Lord, those who may have been in this for many, many, many years, God, you've got more to show us than what we could ever imagine. So we invite the more, Jesus. Come in, come in, come in. <laughs> You're already here, but we ask, come in again, more of your glory, God. Come and fill the earth with the manifestation of your glory. your glory come in. Come right through us, living gateways. Mm -hmm. We welcome you. Yeah, just put your hands right out in front of you and just say, Lord, you're welcome. Come a little bit more. <laughs> come a little bit more. I welcome you, Jesus. Take up your throne right here in my heart. <sighs> Where's temples now? <laughs> Come fill your temple with your glory. <laughs> Come fill your temple with your glory right here.
Heaven's bridegroom, my dearest one, son of God and son of man, my beloved friend, 
my heart is longing for my love my heart is longing for my love oh come lord jesus come the spirit and the bride say
people calling we can feel the spirit moving and we say come come and rip the sky wide open can you hear your people calling we can feel the spirit moving and we say what you're doing, Lord. We say come. Oh, you're moving, Lord. You're stirring your church. And we say come. Oh, we're in agreement. Oh, come and do all that's in your heart. We say come. We say come. And we say come. I want everybody to stand right now. And I just want you to get yourself in an attitude of encounter. This room is called the Encounter Room. And we have done that by faith in Jesus, that he is a real God. He's a living person, and he is here, here to encounter you today. And so I want us to just step into an encounter attitude right now that I, I feel like the Lord is putting his hand on some of your foreheads right now. So close your eyes. Close your eyes and just put yourself in an attitude of encounter and feel the presence of God with his hand upon your forehead. Some of you are sensing a weightiness, like your arms feel heavy, like you could sit down and like take a nap, that your knees are shaking. This is the encounter of God in the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place today, right now. And you are called the priesthood of the believers. You know, in the holies, the house of holy, the holiest of holies, only the priests could go. In the old covenant. But you are welcome there. You are invited. 
that Psalm 104 says that you can enter his gates with thanksgiving. So let's just say thank you right now before Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, right now. We thank you for, thank you, God, for your son, for your mercy, for your kindness, for your love, for your devotion, for your dedication, for your, you know, just everything, God, that you are faithful. You are everlasting, God. We thank you for that, Jesus. And Lord, we pray for encounters, not, Lord, not for our own glory, but for yours. But that, Lord, we would be transformed because we believe that the word itself is nothing without power. And that, Lord, we call in your power. And so, Lord, we give thanks. But, Lord, we also give praise because it's not enough to just get into your gate. We want to get into your courts, Father. We want to be at your feet. So, Lord, we praise you right now, and we just lift our voices in praise. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you for everything that you are. We praise you for your very nature. We thank you for your church. We thank you for everything you've done. And, Lord, we thank you that we are not wussy Christians. That, Lord, we're not afraid to go through the trial and fight the fire. Because you go with us. That, Lord, you make a way where there is no way. And we praise you for that, God. We praise you for that. So, Lord, just impress us with your presence. Touch us with your presence. Transform us, God. We're nothing if we're not transformed, Father. You know, there were two things, church, that moved Jesus. Two things. Faith and compassion. So raise your hand if you have a need, or in particular, or if they're, you're standing in faith for something. Just raise your hand right where you're at. A lot of people raising their hands today. So, Lord, we just thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you see who's raising their hands and standing, Lord, in faith. And that also, Lord, who have a need. And, Lord, be moved today by, our, by your compassion and your faith for your bride, who stands in faith for you believing that you are real and that you are a person and that you're here to do something today in us. So we thank you, Father, for that blessing right now. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus a hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We shout and scream for you. Amen, church. If we can shout and act like crazy fanatics for the Sounders or the Seahawks or the Mariners, how much more can we do it for Jesus? Amen. Praise you, Lord. I'll never forget that God gave me that revelation at a Sounders game. Of all places, what was I doing there? But anyway, there's the people. Waves and flags. And I'm like, okay, so flagging's okay. Oh, and they're like screaming and blowing horns. Okay, so the show par's all right. Huh. Okay, and jumping up and down and screaming when they score, I can jump on up and down during worship. Amen? So you are welcome here if you are a fanatic for Jesus. I'm a Jesus freak. Whose freak are you? All right, well, we got a couple of minutes. Before we get to announcements, um, I want to give Christina and Monique a real quick uh, shout-out to come up forward. They're going to share a quick testimony from uh, yesterday's event in Olympia. Yes. <laughs> and I know there weren't just girls there, because no. I saw John in a photo. Yes, yes. <laughs> the body of Christ, men and women. So many people were there yesterday at the Capitol, and not only were we standing up for the children, for every generation, for our state and our nation, and obviously, it's a threat to the enemy. And so many people were there yesterday. We were worshiping and we were praying. We did communion. 
and we were speaking out, and the interesting thing was behind us, <laughs> sadly, there was some gay people, and they were literally yelling as we were worshiping and speaking out. They were yelling, and uh, obviously, <laughs> the demons were feeling threatened by us, but you know what? <laughs> Father God literally he showed me and her even. <laughs> Father God literally was seeking all of our nation. He was literally sitting there at the throne looking down. And he was hearing everyone of the body of Christ speaking out, standing up for our state and nation. And sadly, the enemy has also attacked Israel. But we stand up for Israel. And we thank you, Lord, that you've got angels protecting Israel, and protecting us, the body of Christ. 2024 is obviously a threat to the enemy, but it's not to us, because <laughs> the Lord is using us all. My take on the event yesterday was I was coming there to take back ground. I have a daughter who's transgender. I have a daughter who's had surgery and has taken hormones. And... For me, it was taking back ground and standing for our kids. So, and I want to declare, just like they did at the end of this thing, it is finished. In the name of Jesus, it is finished. Amen. All right, well, let's pray really quick without just letting these guys go. So, Lord, we just ask, we bless you right now in Jesus' name. And by proxy, we just lift up these two women of God right now before you. And God, we stand in the gap for Kellen and anybody else that is, you know, facing gender dysphoria and just believing in the lie of the enemy in Jesus' name. We just curse that lie right now. We come against it. And we just throw it back. We shut the mouth of the enemy. We come against that right now. We say no to the lies, the lies of the enemy that just confuse and are out to assault the very identity of young people today. And Lord, your identity stands and remains in Jesus' name. And so, Lord, we just bless that event. We bless that things would be released in the spirit that would go forward, that were seated there in the soil right now, in the spirit, God, that is beginning to birth life. And we come against death, darkness, despair, um, hopelessness, hopelessness. We come against all of that right now. In the name of Jesus, amen, 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 amen. amen. All right, Nikki's going to have announcements, and then we'll move from there. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, you found us. <laughs> Whether you're online or you're here, you found us, and it's so exciting to be together. All of our restrooms are in the other buildings, so whether you go to the house or the little low building in the parking lot, the restrooms are in the door on the right. If you find a door and you turn right, you're going to find the bathroom. Uh, well our kids' ministry does every other week. So kids, finish eating your snacks because you're going to get released at the end of announcements. Uh, and our kids' ministry, Thrive Kids, is for ages 5 to 12. We also have a nursery available for under 5. And if you're watching online and you're thinking, oh, I'll come next week. Great, yeah, come next week. Actually, we like kids in service because they have the same Holy Spirit and they can receive the same thing. But we also like to meet them where they're at and use their vocabulary. So we do that every other week. So. Um, that's that's who we are. Okay, back on track now. Uh, uh, we have so many ways to give, and if you are a cash and check person because you love the physical act of giving, we celebrate that. Physical giving is not out of style. Bring it on. I actually have to go to the bank and get some checkbooks pretty soon because there's a certain person I need to pay, my son, who and we can't figure out how to get him money except through a checkbook, so I need to give him a check. Um, so for checks and cash, we've got a black box in the kitchen, and there's envelopes for tracking or giving. If you'd like to give online, you can go to our website, thrivenw.church, click on Give or Donate, and set that all up. If you want to make it even easier, there is text to give, and you just send the number to 84321, and it's amazing, just seconds of stuff. We have a few changes to announcements, so I do want you to mark your calendars for this Saturday because Kyle and Carissa are moving, woo, yay! But it's not at 10 a.m., it's gonna be at 12. So the slide is wrong, and they're in Lakewood. So yeah, that gives you more morning, but um, contact Kyle, Kyle, raise your hand. Get Kyle's address so that you go to the right place. 
Uh, there's also a Facebook event, if that helps you, rem you remember. You can RSVP on the Facebook event and also reach Kyle that way in case you forget today, because you know, good stuff's going to happen and a lot of the announcements slip our minds and that's okay. We are going to start having a monthly midweek service. Our first one is going to be this Wednesday. And this is a compliment to all the other great things that God is doing in all the places. So if you have been aching for a midweek gathering, you didn't know where to go, come on down here. It's going to be an awesome time of worship, prayer, testimony, open mic. It's going to be hot and we're just going to stir hunger. We're going to stir hunger within ourselves, stir hunger within the region. And again, this is a compliment, not a replacement. So... If you're in the area and you're like, I don't know where to go, well, it's right here in this room, sun, uh, Wednesday night at 7. Friday night, we have family game night, which is an all-ages fun time gathering. If you want to get slaughtered in Uno, the white kids are happy to slaughter you. Oh, my gosh. I only won once. <laughs> and if you want to play something else, bring it. Bring your favorite snack and board game to share. Tim, please raise your hand. Tim and John in the back, they are going to be our hosts for that event, so come on down, make it fun. If you wouldn't mind RSVPing on the Facebook event, that helps them know how many tables to set up. And then our men's breakfast is going to be um, in a few Saturdays. It's going to be on May the 4th. It is at my house. Uh, my husband David is in the back on th in the blue shirt. He's waving his hand. Get the address from him. It's just a good time to have coffee and enjoy the day as men. Neighbors come. There's always bacon. Can't say more good things about just community of getting together, right? That's awesome. And then, okay, kids, you made it with your announcements. You can go ahead and gather in the back. We're going to pray for you before you go, though, so don't open the door. All right, so everyone, we're just going to pray to the back. Raise your hands if you will. Jesus, we believe that you're doing mighty things in our kids, the ones that are here, the ones that are at home, and the ones that are in nursery. We believe that you are touching them and raising them to be mighty oaks, and you've anointed our teachers and assistants to speak awesome, life-giving things to them today. Amen. Amen. All right. Wow. There's a lot going on here. That's really great, and... I'm bummed a little because I'm not, I'm not really lots of bummed, but I'm a little bummed because we're going to be gone. We're going to be missing the, mid, the midweek service and the game night as my family is traveling to Ohio this next week to spend some time with Brian and Rachel Havens, good friends that most of you remember. <sighs> if you don't remember them, sorry. <laughs> I'm sure you do. That's awesome. So we're going to, yeah, I, I've, I'm already carrying, I think, at least a dozen hugs from people. Like, make sure you give them my hugs. Okay. I'm going to give them my own first, but, <laughs> yeah. Also, just a reminder, I, I didn't hear it. I'm not usually here for the announcements, but today I was. Check it out, right? Um, uh, but it's a reminder that uh, Marissa and I are going to be traveling to Kenya. Uh, we're leaving May 13th. We're, we're going there with... Apostle Mark Tubbs, and I think Ann is coming too, and a, a group of about 12 of us are going. Uh, we'd really love uh, your support financially for that, and uh, as I said last week, I, that's, not, that's not so that we can pay the bill. It's actually so that you get blessed. It's actually so that you get to be a part of our trip. <clears throat> I don't care about paying the bill. I'm going to get it paid whether you join or not, but if you join, <clears throat> you get blessed. So do that. Um, if you want to do that, uh, you can do the text giving thing or go to our website or put a note on your check um, or on the envelope that says mission or missions and we'll know what it's for. Okay? Or Kenya. If you're writing it, you can write whatever you want. All right. Amen? So good. Well, I'm not going to take very much time uh, in introducing uh, uh, Joe. I'm just delighted to have him and Sandy. I don't know if you guys are going to, what you're going to do. But what I know is that J Joe told me this morning that God woke him up at 2 a.m. and changed everything. And that's because God wants to say something to you and me. So I want you, uh, he knew each one of you were going to be here. He knew what was, what was going on here at Thrive uh, at, at a level that's so beyond what we even understand. So he brought a word that's like right off the press, like he woke him up in the morning to get it to us. So are you ready for that? Can you stir your hearts and welcome him as he comes? Come on. Yeah. Thanks, John. Can I get a 
Can I get? Can I use one of these uh, stands here? That'd be great. I don't need to sing the songs. Just yeah. There we go. Amen. So glad to be with you again, and um, excited about what God's doing at Thrive. Amen. You know, um, as we were worshiping, um, the Lord just you know sometimes things happen, and you know. This morning, like 2 a.m., I wake up and the Lord's like, that's not the word. You need, this is the word. And I'm like, well, thanks for telling me ahead of time. I would have liked that on Thursday. Um, But that's okay. It's all good. Uh, But then as we began to worship, it was confirmed. And so it's like, wow, here we go. And um, and so let let me go back. You guys, we were singing. Uh, when he moves and when we pray, where we're, we're stood a wall now stands away. I'm going to talk to you about that very subject today. And, um, and so, you know, God is doing some new things, as somebody, I think somebody mentioned that too. There's lots of things happening. But, but what I sensed and what I was praying this morning, and the Lord just spoke to me over the last couple of weeks, and I was praying for your church. And um, some of you know us. We were here maybe a year ago. I don't remember exactly. Was it July? And um, and we're local. You know, Sandy and I, we attend New Horizon Church over in Fife. Um, we've been there for about 28 and a half years, so we've been there for, for a couple weeks now. Um, and uh, when I went there, I had hair. It was awesome. Um, it was curly and black. Um, that's what leadership does to you. So... <laughs> kidding but uh but you know um we love uh what god's doing in the northwest and and i'll tell you it, it's exciting to see what god's doing in throughout the region uh we were down in pasadena last weekend at the him conference and uh and then um you know with apostle mark tubbs and and uh and we were uh, with those guys and what God's doing, and and you could just sense within uh, the folks that were there that God's doing something great across the nation. Yeah. There's so many things happening. Um, you know what we experienced yesterday in Olympia is a tip of the iceberg of what God's doing throughout the nation, and um, God is putting a call and a mandate on churches to rise up. And to defend righteousness and do the things that we should have been doing 50 years ago, 60 years ago. And um, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but, but uh, had we done some of those things, we might not be dealing with some of these things so much today. But, um, but anyway, it's awesome to be here, to be with you. Uh, we love you guys. We love your pastors. And uh, we're excited to be part of it. Honey, would you come up and just, I think she had something she wanted to share really quick. And his. Thanks. Um, we're, we are so excited to be here, honestly. And I love, like he was saying, how God confirms things. Um, this morning I was praying for you guys and had a couple verses that I wanted to read to you. So it's out of Song of Songs, which is a beautiful, beautiful love story of the bride, you know, the bridegroom and his bride, Jesus and us. And the story of, of the ebb and flow of that and how sometimes what we want so much we run from. And then he's like, but no, but here. And it's, it's amazing. Um, so I'm going to read you out of the Passion Translation, chapter 2, uh, verses 10 through 13. The one I love calls to me, arise, my dearest. Hurry, my darling. Come away with me. I have come, as you have asked me, to draw you to my heart and lead you out. I mean, I know every one of us have prayed that. God, you know, draw me closer to you. And he's like, yeah. I'm here. I came. For now is the time, my beautiful one. The season has changed. Your barren winter has ended. The season of hiding is over and gone. It's gone. It's time. It's time to rise and shine, people. The rains have soaked the earth. Holy Spirit has been poured out, not just um, in this place, but in the body of Christ all around the world, and left it bright with blossoming flowers. That's us. The season for singing and pruning has arrived. I hear the cooing of doves in our land. The land It's not just his land. We are part of that. It is our land. Um, 
filling the air with songs to awaken you and guide you forth like John was doing this morning. The worship, so sweet this morning. Can you not discern this new day, destiny breaking forth around you? The early signs of my purposes and plans are bursting forth. <laughs> Look at our nation, guys. The er it's, it's busting out. The budding vines of new life are now blooming everywhere. The fragrance of their flowers whispers, there's change in the air. There is change in the air. Arise, my love, my beautiful companion. Run with me to the higher place. Now is the time to arise and come away with me. Amen. So good. Amen. Wow. Well, let me tell you. So as we were worshiping, the Lord just began to drop something in my spirit for you. And that is that he's going to take your church to new heights. There's some deeper depths coming. Um, I'm telling you, there's a fresh oil that's being released over this place. And a deeper anointing, deeper truths, and the miraculous is about to be released in healings and salvations, in seeing turnarounds that you've never dreamed were possible. The Lord is saying, expand your tent stakes because... You can't contain what I have. Physically, you can't contain what he has for you today in this place. So thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you for Thrive. We thank you for an anointing in the Puyallup Valley. We thank you, Lord, that you didn't put this church in the fertile soil of Puyallup uh, as, as simply a coincidence, but it's to grow the kingdom of God. And we thank you for that, Lord. And we declare this ground fertile. We declare this church growing. We declare an abundance in every area in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about taking territory. How many of you are ready to take some territory? We want to do some stuff. And, and, um, and uh, I want to go back and we'll look at Deuteronomy just for a moment. In Deuteronomy uh, 34, verses 7 and 8, it says, it says, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord, and he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. Moses was 120 years old when he died. Anybody close to that in here? No? Okay. We're going there. Amen. I love his description. It says that he is, his eyes were not dim, nor his natural vigor diminished. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. So the days of weeping and mourning for, Mo, uh, for Moses ended. So can you imagine this for a minute? You're one of the Israelites. Moses is the only leader you've ever known. Everyone else died except for two. He's the only leader you've ever known, and now he's dead. Now you've got 30 days to mourn for him. You've seen him as a miracle leader. You've heard the great tales of how we brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. You've heard all these things, and you've seen him do some things. Now he's dead. And you've been wandering around in a harsh desert, but you've seen rock, water come out of a rock. You've seen some things happen. You've heard about this land that God promised you that's filled with milk and honey and how that it is an abund abundant and fruitful place, but you haven't seen it yourself yet. And now Moses is dead. And Moses made sure that the people knew that Joshua would be their next leader. But now the day has come. So Joshua was probably pretty bummed and probably a little freaked out. Because I can tell you as being the right-hand guy, it's a lot easier than being the center guy. Because the sinner guy is your safety net. Now all of a sudden, 
his mentor, his confidant, his person to go to, his trainer, the man that he followed, the idea guy. Anybody around here got an idea guy? Is Pastor John, are you an idea guy? Do you have ideas? At our church, our pastor, he has more ideas than there are days in the year and time in the day. And, you know, we got ideas coming out of our ears. I, I've got ideas. My wife calls me an idea guy. And, um, you know, we, I've got more ideas than I have common sense. So, you know, it's just like, go, go, go. We can do it all. <laughs> you know, yes is only word in my vocabulary. No doesn't exist. You know, yes, I'll do that for you. You know, but he was the idea guy. But now all of a sudden, he's got a job to do. Where do you go next? And he's in charge. Anybody ever been thrust into a position of leadership? You went from, you know, kind of a support role to all of a sudden you're in charge? That can be a little bit overwhelming. You can be put into a position where you're wondering, what is going on? How did I get to this point? Are they sure they picked the right person? You know, I'll get there tomorrow morning, my key won't really fit, and the real guy in charge will show up. You kind of, I've actually hoped that, you know. I've actually offered the key to many people over the years, that here's the key, you're welcome, you know. And then all of a sudden, everything you've ever felt confident about, you question. I'm like, really? Is that really a good idea? Is that really from God, or is that really what the training told me? And sometimes, you know, you get thrust into a leadership position to become frozen or stagnant, and you don't want to move. We want to live on the hymn of that last leader and not really go anywhere else, you know. You kind of try and run things the way the last guy did. And you just want things to go well until the real leader shows up, right? Been there, you know? If you haven't experienced this, congratulations, or maybe someday you will, one of those two. But I love this in Joshua 1, 1, and 2. This is what it says in the Passion. I want to read this in the Passion because he, said, he says it so well. I hope you guys don't mind the Passion Trials. We love the Passion. So. We, we love uh, Dr. Brian. I don't know if you guys know him here or not, but we love him, and, and we love what he's bringing to the body of Christ right now. But anyway, I want to read this. It says, and after Moses, Yahweh's servant, died, Yahweh spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' faithful assistant. So God even noticed. You know? Yay. And he, but he says something to him that's really profound. He says, my servant Moses is dead. Now he says this. This is what's really cool. He follows it with, now get up. For 30 days you've mourned. For 30 days you've been bummed. For 30 days you've questioned. For 30 days you've wondered what's going to happen next. And God comes in and says, get up. Anybody ever had, tell, had God tell you, get up? Get ready? But, you know, most of us have known that one person who spends their day, at least part of it, reading the obituaries in the newspaper. Anybody, anybody do that? Anybody know anybody that does that? You know? My mother, who passed away a few years ago, but when she was alive, she would like, she paid attention to who was dying all around her, especially as she got older. You know, she lived in a, in a building that was filled with elderly people, and, and people would die, and, and, and she didn't even have to know them, but she would find out, and I would call, and I would talk with her, and she would be really bummed about it. And I'd be like, well, Mom, what's going on? Oh, you know, Kevin on the fourth floor died, and I'm just so sad. And I'm like, well, Mom, how old was Kevin? He was 94. 94. That sounds pretty good. Like 94, you know? And she would be really disappointed about that. And I'd have to bring her out. Usually it would be like I would 
jokingly say, you know, Mom, that's great. You're gonna, you outlived another person. <laughs> you know? But it always bummed her out. And, and then in this case, you know, God shows up after they've mourned, and he makes this obvious announcement that Moses is dead. In other words, Joshua, he's not coming back. Get up. You've got some stuff to go do. You're in charge. It's time to move forward. It's time to get out of your funk and get moving. Stop mo- mourning and stop wandering and start moving. I'm surprised that God didn't actually say, well, Margaret Sims, Joe's mom, called me and said Moses had died. But anyway, that was a whole nother, whole nother subject. But, but here's the deal. Many of us have had some things die in our lives. And we've been mourning too long. And I believe what God is saying today is it's time to get up. It's time to move forward. It's time to begin something new. It's time to trade your disappointment for your next assignment. And that's exactly what Joshua and the Israelites had to do. They had to put the disappointment behind them and get ready to move forward. Amen? The next thing that happens is God continues to talk to Joshua. Hallelujah. Don't you just love the Lord? He, he'll continue to talk to you. And he says this in verse 2. He says, prepare to cross the Jordan River. You and all the people. Lead them into the land that I am giving to the Israelites. Every part of the land where you march, I will give you as I promised Moses. Your borders will extend. I'm telling you, that's a word for this church. Your borders are going to extend. From the southern desert to the northern mountains of Lebanon, and from the great river Euphrates in the east to the Mediterranean in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, Joshua No one, I love this, no one will be able to defeat you for the rest of your life. I will be with you as I was with Moses, and I will never fail nor abandon you. You must be strong and courageous, some translations say. You will lead the people to acquire and apportion the land that I promised their ancestors. Can you imagine hearing those words. Would courage not come upon you? Would would you not begin to feel a little bit more excited about what's going on right now? Because no longer are you thinking about, wow, who's going to lead us? You're like, I don't, I got, God's going to lead me. What's better than Moses? (laughs) The one that was leading Moses. And, And you're beginning to take this territory that God's promised you. And you're not even realizing that the reality was Moses had to die for them to go into the promised land. Had they fully realized that, there may have been a bounty on him. Now, theologians haven't thought of that angle So I'm just helping you out a little bit. But just saying, but I love this. He says, prepare to cross. The time has come. Your promised land is right in front of you. Everywhere you march, it's yours. Come on. If you were told everywhere you go is yours, I bet a bunch of us would run to REI and grab some new boots, and we'd start marching. We start stomping around, taking some territory. When we were building our church over in Fife, we, we stood against a lot of, of resistance in the spirit realm and in, the, in city hall and all kinds of things. And there came a point where we were ready to build and we could not get going on some things. And a bunch of us got together and we're like, you know what, we're going to take authority over this. 
And so we went out to the four corners of the Puyallup Reservation. And a bunch of us, we went, and each of us that kind of led a crew, we went and we took a vial of oil and a cylinder with a bunch of proclamations in them. And we went to the four corners and we dug a hole. We buried the proclamations. We prayed over that area and we anointed it with oil. Those, they're still in the ground probably in some fashion unless some little kid dug. I know where I buried mine on Dash Point. And, um, and I'm telling you, it made a difference. We had a breakthrough. And you know what? Because we began to take territory. We were like, you know what, Lord? You promised us this. So we're going to take some territory. We're going to take some authority. Much like what's going on in this nation right now where, where people are rising up and they're beginning to do communion over the land. And they're, they're, they're receiving communion. They're pouring the blood of Jesus on the land, redeeming the land. It's the same principle. He goes on, he says, everywhere you march will be yours. Your, your feet will determine your territory. Oh, man. Your borders will extend as far as you can see. I love this. No one will be able to defeat you for the rest of your life. How about that for a promise? Come on, you walk in that kind of authority. And he says, I will never fail you or abandon you. Apply and uh, acquire and apportion. God is saying the same things over us today. He's saying the same things over this house today. He's saying he's given you territory. He's saying wherever you march is yours. He's saying expand, overtake, acquire, and apportion. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua 3 goes on and says this. It says, Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove, and they came to the Jordan. He and all the children, and they lodged there before they crossed. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priest." The Levites bearing it. Then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it. Don't come near it, that you may know by which, by the, the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way before. You know, really quick sidestep. Acacia Wood. Acacia wood was something that represented strength and divinity and authority. And it's really tough and it's resilient. If you ever had a, any kind of an acacia wood piece of furniture, it's a good piece of furniture. You know, we, we love it. We got a couple of pieces in our home that are acacia and they just are durable and they hang out. We got 12 grandkids, so you, gotta, you better have something durable, you know. Um, I have. Well, my wife, I think people would see her and they think she's got like none because she looks 20 years younger than me. But that's okay. It's all good. Blessed. So anyway, um, but God was calling them out of what they thought was protection into their promised land. But they had some stuff to do. And it's interesting because they break camp. They're excited to break camp. They break camp and they go and they set up and they got, they're going to sit there for three days. It's kind of interesting. This is interesting. Because they're going to sit there for three days and they know that on the other side of the Jordan is where they have to get to. It's kind of interesting. How many of us have been facing what we know there's something great on the other side of whatever we're facing, but we have no idea how we're going to get to where we need to go. You ever been there? I've been there multiple times. And it's always interesting to see what God does and what he has planned, you know. I mean, 
for you know you guys don't know us but we've spent our lives we've, we've been married for 42 years and um and we got married we were 18 and 16 when we got married just so you all know and if you're 18 or 16 do not think that's a license to go get married okay um that is you know you need to go talk to your parents figure it out but um uh, but what I will tell you is that launching out in life that young, I'm a guy that quickly figured out I want to be stable. You know, I grew up in an environment that wasn't stable. So did my wife. We both grew up very poor, um, you know, and uh, my dad was a was a pastor. Uh, but but, you know, he was he it was it was a struggle for us financially. And we lived in mobile home parks that didn't have asphalt. And we were in the middle of the San Joaquin Valley down in California when it was 120 degrees. And, and you had a cooler on your uh, house that was a water cooler. If any of you have ever heard of those or seen those things, they didn't keep anything cool. They just, you know, sent boiling water running around the place. Um, and, and so we, you know, that was, that was the lifestyle we lived. Sandy's lifestyle was that her and her mom were homeless a lot. So we, you know, so nobody can say, well, you don't understand. Oh, trust me, completely understand. But it pushed me into this decision that I wanted to be stable. I wanted life to be normal. I wanted my kids to grow up in a stable environment with one set of parents and, you know, all these different things. And they're great things. Don't get any of that wrong. It's fabulous. But then about probably four or five years ago, the Lord just began to deal with me, and he said, you know, I'm changing your direction. I'm like, well, that's interesting, because I've been doing the same thing my entire life, and I've built a pretty good company here locally, and, and um, you know, my business partner and I have done really well, and the Lord's like, yeah, well, get ready. You're about to make a shift. And so we made a tough decision, and we sold the company, I sold my part of it in December of four or five months ago, whatever whatever that is. You guys, do did you guys come to my party? They came to my refirement party, I call it. And um, and so, but but what it's caused us to do is we now are living by faith in a whole different level than we did before. You know, and but but we also recognized that we were crossing over something. We had come to our Jordan, and it was time to move on past that. And so we said, yeah, we'll, we'll do that, Lord, you know, because God's promising some territory, and we're all about taking territory for the kingdom of God. I loved, I loved running a business. I loved, I loved it. I was really good at it. We had 200 employees and managed, you know, a couple billion dollars worth of real estate. And, um, you know, it, it, there's... You know, as a business person, when you're at the pinnacle of success, it's a drug. And, you know, and it feels pretty good, you know, because you go home and you, you just feel good about yourself. And, but then there came a point where I'm like, you know what, God's got something greater for us. And so we begin to move down that road. And I'm not telling you any of that to brag. I want you just to hear my heart today. But I would tell you, most people choose what's known because it gives us a sense of security and it makes us comfortable. But God didn't bring the Israelites out of Egypt to spend their lives in the familiarity of the wilderness. He didn't rescue them from Egypt to leave them in the wilderness. He hasn't rescued you from things to leave you in your sin. He didn't rescue you from your addiction to leave you in your addiction. He hasn't rescued us so that we can barely get by. He didn't, you know, here's the way I wrote it down, is you you were not just saved from something, but you were saved for something. I want to continue in verse 5 here, Joshua 3. It says, after three days, the leaders of the people went throughout the camp. So three days gone by. They've had three days to think about how are we going to get across this river, which, oh, by the way, was an early harvest flood stage, okay? So after three days, 
the leaders of the people went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. Watch for the priest, they said, to lift the ark of the covenant of Yahweh, your, uh, your God. Okay? And they said, when it starts moving, follow it so you'll know which way to go since you've never marched this way before. And it says, get yourselves ready. Set yourselves apart. Tomorrow, Yahweh will perform for us great miracles. They had only seen Moses perform great miracles. They had not seen Joshua. They're about ready to experience something that, that they've never experienced before. These folks followed God. They followed his, you know, they've, they've followed Moses. They've risen up. They've been stupid at times, but they've followed Moses. They've seen God work miracles. And they thought they probably, maybe some of them thought, well, what else could God possibly do? You know, what else could he possibly do? And then it says, you've never marched this way before. That's a word for this church. You've, you're about to encounter some things you've never done before. The wilderness, it was predictable. It was familiar. It was their home. And then all of a sudden they're told, you've never done this before. Get ready. You've never done this before. It's uncomfortable. How many of you would say what's unfamiliar is uncomfortable? A lot of times it is. Even if it's nice, it's, it's uncomfortable. You know, we travel a lot. And even though the beds can be nice, they're not my bed. I like my bed. You know, in, in, I did a lot of research to figure out what bed is the most comfortable bed for me to sleep on, you know. And, and so if you need an, a, any, any plugs, I've got one for you. But, um, you know, it is the great unknown. How many of you have been ar- around, like in the 1990s, you remember there was a guy named Stephen Curtis Chapman. Anybody heard of him? Okay, got it. And he, he had this song out. And it was, it was uh, you know, The Great Adventure. Anybody remember that song? Okay, you know? And it, it was, you know, saddle up your horses. We got a trail to blaze. Through the great blue yonder with God's amazing grace. Remember that? That's it, right? I can keep going. But that, that's it. All right, that's the only solo you're going to get. I used to sing. I used to sing tenor in our church's uh, group, and I was 10 or 12 miles. No, I'm kidding. But no, um, you know, but it goes on, and it's like, you know, started out in the usual way, way, you know, chasing thoughts inside my head of all the things I thought I had to do today. And it goes on, it says this, it says, it hit me like a lightning bolt, I saw a big frontier in front of me, and I heard somebody say, let's go. Come on, that's what God's saying to us, there's a frontier ahead of you, it's time to get up and go. You got stuff to accomplish. That's what he's saying to us today. And I'm taking you places that you've never been before. I want to go some places I've never been before. How about you? Let's look at verse 3 again. It says, giving orders to the people, watch for the priest of the tribe of Levi to lift the ark of the covenant, and when it starts moving, follow it. Now, I want you to catch this. The ark of the covenant It was a wooden box. Guess what kind of wood it was made out of? Acacia. Okay, just so we're all on the same page. All right? And uh, I just think that's totally cool. Okay? I brought you out of the cover of the acacia forest for you to follow the acacia. Okay? Come on. What you thought was your protection of the earth has been made into a representation of the presence of God. And as the people stepped into all that God had for them, the ark would go ahead of them. His presence goes before them. His presence goes before us. Stay behind it so you can see it. But at all cost, pursue his presence. At all cost, pursue his presence. Where he's taking you, you've never been before. It said, It said you have to follow it because you've never marched this way before. We don't want you getting lost. Stay focused on his presence. 
When it moves, you move. Faith says sit down and enjoy the ride when you're standing at the top of that water slide at Enchanted Park. Anybody been there and stood at some of those big water slides? You know, like, I'm not sure where this thing's going to come out, but, you know. And I, yeah, I, have you been the guy behind the person who freaks out and they change their mind? And all of a sudden they're kind of going down the stairs. And you're like, I call it the walk of shame, you know. And then, and then there's, you know, and then there's the little eight-year-old boy who's like, yeah, yeah. And it's like his dad's leaving. He's like, Dad, come on, you know. And the dad's like, I'm scared. And the kid's like, Dad, I'll hold your hand. You know, let's go. You know, right? You guys been there? Okay. We have a granddaughter that's going to work there this year. It's going to be awesome to go in whenever. So anyway, um, but, you know, faith says sit down and enjoy the ride. Doubt says be careful and hang on to what you know. And, but it's only when we step out in faith that we can experience what God has for us. You know, Craig Cooney says it this way. He says, the greatest enemy of the new is the known. Anybody read that book on transition that he's written? Phenomenal. But you've got to take the first step. In, in Joshua 3, verse 14 through 16, it says this, it says, now it was time for the early harvest, and the river was overflowing when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan. The priest went in front of them, carrying the Ark of the, of, of the Covenant on their shoulders. Catch this. Get this right here. The very moment the priest with the Ark dipped their feet in the river's edge, the water coming downstream toward them stopped flowing. And it piled up in a solid wall as far upstream as Adam. I want you to catch this because Adam represents the old. Adam represents the old covenant. Adam represents sin. Adam represents the other side of your victory. Adam represents the other side of your destiny. And Yahweh completely cut off the flow. It wasn't a muddy bed that they walked across. It wasn't, it wasn't a little trickle of water that they had to wade through. They walked through dry ground. He completely cut it off. And it says, so the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Come on, that river represents where we're currently at. And you might be looking at some things today and going, you know what, I don't know how I'm going to get from where I'm at to where God has promised that I would be going. Thrive Church, you might be sitting here thinking, how do we possibly get from where we're at today to where we see God taking us as a congregation? How can we go from a small building to the great things that we feel and know that God's calling us to? I actually don't know the answer. But we know the one who does. You know? And, but our inheritance, come on, how many of you have an inheritance? And our plans and the purpose of God that he has for us, that place where dreams are fulfilled, that place where promises are fulfilled, that place where all the things you've thought of that you imagined could happen for you are fulfilled. They're on the other side of that river that might be at flood stage right now. They didn't have a boat. They didn't have a bridge. They only had the Ark of the Covenant. Verse 15, 16 holds the key. It says, the very moment the priests dipped their feet in the river's edge, the water stopped. You have to step out. You can't sit comfortably and wonder, when's it going to happen? 
Sandy and I in our situation, we could have sat there. We had plenty of comfort, believe me. We could have sat there. I said, well, you know, someday, maybe. And then God's like, no, no, no. I put some things in you that you can't get released out of you until you begin to step out. I believe that's true for you. It's true for this house. But our job is to pursue his presence above everything else. Because if we'll pursue his presence, if we'll pursue him, he will cause the waters to part. He will cause the rivers of trouble to stop. He will cause your feet to cross on dry land. And he, he will cause all of the enemies that have stood against you, they will have to stop. James reminds us to draw near to God and that he will draw near to us. It's interesting. If we move toward him, he'll move toward us. Jeremiah says this. You want to grab the keys? Can you, can you jump on the keys? Just for a minute. Do you mind? Okay. Do you have to fire them up or anything? Okay. Awesome. I don't know. Sometimes I ask for things and they're like. I saw a couple out there that I'd trade you. I'm just kidding. I want us to hear this today. Because if you came here this morning and you're like, you know what, I don't know. I'm, I'm just at this point where I sense God wants me to do something. I sense his presence. I sense what he has for me on the other side of these things. But I don't know how I'm going to get there. I want you to hear this some more this morning. In Jeremiah 1, verse 5, it says this. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. But catch this. He says, and approved you. As my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I consecrated you to myself. Sometimes we get born into situations and we feel like we weren't wanted. You know, maybe you were like my wife, been born to a single mother, and the father was nowhere to be found, and she's never met him. It's an easy place to feel like you're unwanted. But when you understand it, he says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I consecrated you to myself. Come on. Come on. The father of fathers, the ultimate father, has considered you his own. That's greater than any earthly father could ever communicate. It's greater than any earthly father, no matter how good he is, could ever love you. When Daddy God says, I've consecrated you to myself, come on, there's a comfort that comes in knowing that. And he says, you've been approved. You know, no matter how much rejection you've gone through, if Father God says you've been approved, there's no demon in hell that can stop you from succeeding at what God's called you to do and what he's saying he's put for you on this earth. And he goes on, he says, I've appoint, appointed you. I just want you to hear this. I've appointed you. I've appointed you. I've anointed you. I've given you a calling. I've given you a purpose, a destiny, a plan for your life. No matter where you came from or where you've ended up, there's something more for you to do. He's created you so that you can create what he's called you to do. Our job today is to take that first step. Would you just stand with me this morning? I just want to pray with you. If you... If this morning, if some of that resonates with you, you say, you know what, I've, I have some things I'm facing that I just need direction. Or if you just lift your hand, I wanna, we want to pray with you this morning. When the Holy Spirit spoke to me, I had another word for you guys this morning. And the Lord just, I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know everything, but I know that the Lord spoke to me. And I, I kind of argued with the Lord about it. I said, well, I thought you had this. And he's like, the, the Lord just said, no, I've changed it. And I'm like, well, 
you know, this is, this is like, this power. Come on, you're facing some stuff. And this morning, God's saying to you, step out. First of all, he's saying, pursue his presence. He's saying, keep your eye on the presence. Keep your eye on the presence. Keep your eye on the presence. And as you step out, as you begin to walk into that river, so to speak, it's going to feel like you might drown because you don't have any waders, you don't have a bridge, you don't have a ferry, you don't have anything to carry you across that. And God's saying, you've got my presence. What more do you need than my presence? So, Father, this morning we declare that we are a people who will pursue your presence, God. We're going to pursue what you have for us with everything that we have, God. Lord, we declare over every hand raised here this morning, Father, that you're giving wisdom, that you're giving a way where there seems to be no way, God. We declare that the river is parted, the dry ground exists, that as we pray, there is a way. Father, we thank you for that this morning, God. And we declare, God, over this church, God, that as it grows here in the Puyallup Valley, God, that you're preparing the way for new buildings, new campuses, a fresh anointing on the pastors, God, a fresh anointing on every person in leadership, Lord. God, that they run with your presence, God, that they run with your presence. Father, we declare over this house growth. We declare over the children the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Lord. We declare over every marriage, God, health and strength, God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing, God. We say, Holy Spirit, we give you this place. We give you this place, God. We declare this is a house of courage, a house of growth, a house of your presence. We thank you for it today, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this morning. Jesus, so good. Joe, there's so many things that that you said that just really struck right at the, the core of what God's been doing in us. One of the things that was interesting, yeah, Angie, hold that up for us. I'll yeah, and the interesting thing is like last week when Ron was speaking, he brought the steak out. This is the, we, we made one extra just so we kind of had one, but just to kind of describe for some of you who maybe weren't there with us in that moment, we actually, we, we went to the corners of our property here and we drove stakes in the ground just like that. And, and we're believing God was, you know, you know, shifting some things. And there were two things that, that we did. And, and sorry, I'm having a hard time thinking and speaking and playing the keyboard. But, but two things that were... Uh, in our focus, we started at the edge of our property, and we were we were looking inward towards the, the property, saying, "God, this is your this is your territory. This is where you've called us." And so, we were praying inward, and then we turned outward to the community and said, "This is something that God's called us to. This is the territory you've made us for." And then what we did is we also went to the outskirts of our city. We had, what? Oh, you have, you have music playing? I can stop. That is so beautiful. And so we went to the boundary, land, uh, the boundary places of our city, and, and we, were, we were driving stakes just like this in the four corners of our city. Again, facing inward to the community first and then outward to the region, saying this is the territory God has made us for. And the interesting thing is that Ron brought this up just last week. And uh, the Lord's been 
been releasing that. And you were saying something else about going somewhere that God's never taken us before. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but uh, you can have that now. I'll probably hit somebody. Um, accidentally. Okay. <laughs> Not on purpose. But a, a couple weeks back uh, when I was ministering, I, I, I quoted a, a movie quote that I did not know. I couldn't remember where it was from, but basically it was something like, get ready. You're about to see something you ain't never seen before. And I found the quote. It's from the movie Secretariat. Um, and and um, it's said by the character whose name is Eddie Sweat or Sweet. Eddie Sweet. And he was kind of the one who would take care of Secretariat, the horse. And uh, Secretariat had not been well before the Kentucky Derby. And uh, he, he hadn't been eating, hadn't been, they hadn't been running him because it just wasn't working out. So they just like, he's going to get to the Kentucky Derby and he's going to be out of shape. He'll be, you know, have no energy because he's not eating. But uh, the morning of the, of the Derby, he, he eats. And uh, so Eddie saying to nobody, that nobody's listening. It's, he's all by himself. He's standing in a, in a field. And he's, he's saying this declaration. This is a declaration that he's making. He's saying, hey, Kentucky, big old Red done ate his breakfast this morning, and you about to see something that you ain't never seen before. And that was the quote that I, I gave a few weeks back. I couldn't quite place it because I just did it extemporaneously right from the pulpit here. But I, I'm declaring over us that something's about to shift. We've already been experiencing a shift, but we're about to have our tent pegs stretched out. Already we, do, we, we don't have space right here. This is not enough space where we're at. There's about to be something that changes. Get ready. Like you were hearing this morning in the Word. Get ready. Because in the morning, you're about to see something you ain't. So I'm just, I want to take just a minute and ask you guys to respond to God. Right where you're at, we don't have an altar, as someone has pointed out to us recently. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's right here, that's all there is. So, But right where you're at, respond to God and say, Lord, I'm getting ready. If that's like, me raise your hand. Uh, whatever that looks like for you, just say, God, I hear your voice. I hear what you're speaking over our church, and I'm saying, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I hear you. I'm responding. I'm not being silent before you. I'm not, I'm not unsure. I may be afraid, but I, I'm definitely getting ready. That's me, Lord. I'm saying that right now where I'm standing, Lord. I'm getting ready. We're about to see some of the things that God has promised come to fulfillment. We're about to see aspects of influence break out into new measures. It's about to happen, folks. It's about to happen, so get ready. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. So good. Oh. The other day, Angie and I went through a little coffee stand on River Road and ordered stuff. And we were just talking with the gal, the, well, the two little gals that were working it. And they were so, you know, just asking us questions. We were asking them questions. And one of them, you know, I, we said something about, yeah, we, you know, just talking about going to church on Wednesday night. It's going to be a new thing for us. And, and they said, are you the ones that the pastor has a bunch of kids or something like that? Because, like, that's John's favorite. That's his hangout place or where he goes through. And I thought that was so awesome. But the thing that hit me was young people. Young people. And I just believe that she and the other gal are going to come along with a lot of others so i'm just saying let's open fling wide these doors open so good thank you jesus 
this morning when God gave me the, the word that I shared, this is what I felt like he was saying to me. I don't know what he was saying to you, but what he was saying to me is if you've been coming to encounter God as a group, that day is over. He does want to encounter us as a group, but more importantly, he wants to encounter you as an individual. So if that's been your that's been your mindset, shift it. Shift it. Lord, I'm here to encounter you. Me to encounter you. So I just encourage you. If that's your mindset, shift it. Yeah, just do that right now. Just respond to God right there. Lord, I'm here, and I, I want you to encounter me. I don't just want to get the tinglys of your presence in the room. Lord, I want you, I want to be face to face with you. I want to see you. I want to encounter you. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Yeah, so good. I'm so encouraged this morning. I, I hope you guys are as well. Um. We're going to wrap it up here, but I want to make an opportunity for you guys to, to sow and give to Joe and Sandy, um, just in honor for the word that they brought and how they served us. Um, you know, imagine like you're a guest speaker going somewhere and you have a word for the, for the, the body prepared and God wakes you up at two o'clock in the morning and says, change it all. I just love the faithfulness and the, and the risk-taking and just the heart you guys care. Uh, you know that already, but I love you. But I hope uh, the body recognizes the servant of the Lord bringing a word to us that we need to hear. Amen. So I want to uh, offer you and ask you to give today. Um, if you do uh, the app, if you use, I mean, not an app, it's a texting. If you text, uh, just use the word speaker. And, and that'll get to us. Also, you can write that on your check or your envelope or, or at the website. Use that speaker opportunity as well, okay? All right, I'm just going to pray. And we're going to wrap it up, all right? Jesus, we thank you that you've got big plans. Oh, we thank you that eye has not seen nor ear heard what you're about to do in this season in our land, in our, through us as a church and in our nation in general. God, you're going to do so many good things. I has not seen it. It's never before entered the heart of man. You're about to do something that's never been done. And, Lord, so we invite it. We want to be right in the thick of it, Lord, and we're just so grateful for all that you're doing, God. We bless you. Lord, I pray your blessing over each person here, Lord, that each person would find their place in the presence of God, knowing that who they are as a son or daughter of God able to walk in the fullness of that identity because it's through us, the gates, that God comes into this earth. And Lord, so I just bless each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you all for being here. It's a delight to be together with you all. And it's, it's just been such a rich time this morning. God bless you. Yeah, we're available to pray with you. If you need prayer, uh, if you need, uh, if you're, pressing for breakthrough in some areas in your life, uh, just come and see one of us on the team, and we'd be, we'd be glad to pray with you and partner with you to see breakthrough. God bless you guys.